I feel bad that it's kind of sprinkly and drizzly out there because I was really excited to perhaps take a group of us out to see the new little mini pivot. Um, last year, when we weren't able to all meet in person, we actually had the first year of research at the new, uh, the second and new uh, pivot that Hoverson Farms put up for potato research at NDSU or University of Minnesota. So um, hopefully everybody at some point in time has an opportunity to go out there and um, see the fantastic trials that are being produced out there. And we extend a huge thank you to Hoverson Farms for being so supportive of all of the potato research that we do. While I'm on thank yous, um, I have a huge list of thank yous. Um, thanks to the Northern Plains Potato Growers Association for putting together all of today's events. As most of you know, we're starting here at Hoverson Farms, but then we're moving north to Inkster, and we're finishing up the day with a nice barbecue at Oberg Storage at Hoople, North Dakota. And as far as the breeding program goes, uh, while we're here at Hoverson Farms, I present a lot of our russet material that's coming through the breeding program. But when we get to our final stop this evening, there the focus is more on the fresh market as well as the chip processing market and, and what potatoes are coming through the breeding program suitable for those market types. Uh, additional thanks beyond Hoverson Farms and Northern Plains Potato Growers Association. I would like to extend a thank you to my team. Um, and I guess before I do that, hopefully they're all sort of where I can have them raise their hand or they can be seen. Um, on the table uh, along this south wall where the potato display is, it is a handout um, and there's a number of copies so please feel free to take that. It is uh, for the whole entire day so if you uh, you know, start here this morning and get a chance to see the rest of potatoes, the same handout but the back pages are where the information about the reds and the chippers is located. Um, okay, now that maybe my crew will have um, been located, uh, obviously as a potato breeder First of all, you can't just do everything by yourself. There is a tremendous amount of collaboration. As Laura mentioned, our two pro programs are doing a, t a lot of work together. Um, we have a super team at NDSU from Gary, Dr. Julie Pashi, Andy, Dr. Harleen Hatterman Valente. We're doing more and more work with Dr. Paulo Flores from Ag Systems Bioengineering. Um, and so potato improvement is really a collaboration between a lot of different team players. So my breeding team is made up of Dick Nillis. He's been the research technician on the team for, I don't know, 15 years, a <laughs> long time anyway. Um, so uh, uh, most of you see him when we're planting or harvesting and he's driving the tractor. I have a number of graduate students that work on our project. And so uh, the first one I would like to introduce is Hashim Andidi. Hashim is from Nigeria, and this is his second year, and he has been working on a herbicide sensitivity screening project with Dr. Hatterman Valenti and Dr. Flores and I. And so he's developing a rapid method to accurately estimate if our advancing selections are sensitive to Sencor or to Metribuzin. Tanis Anderson is a second year master's student as well, and she is helping my program move into the 21st century. But Tanis is working on extracting dihaploids or diploids from our tetraploid potatoes, and so I have her started working with, with Dakota Trailblazer because Trailblazer has just been a magnificent clone and possesses so many resistances and is so um, fun from a sustainability aspect, um, requiring low amounts of fertilizer and water and fungicides, and so um, she's working on that project with me. And um, today I have a new graduate student, David, and David just arrived from Kenya about two weeks ago, and he hasn't selected his project yet, but he may be with Dr. Munever Dagramasi and I, or he may wind up working on a project with Dr. Pashi and Dr. Shannon and I. Today also I have an undergraduate student with. 
and she worked hourly with my program last year and during the course of the uh, school year started to do an undergraduate research project and her project actually is here at the uh, mini pivot and is a, the result of a specialty crop block grant that Dr. Secor and Dr. Robinson and I received and it has to do with and and the other person that uh, works on it as well is Dr. McCray. It has to do with AFOIL which is a crop oil that we use to try to deter aphid feeding and um, it works by actually cleaning the stylet off as aphids are probing from uh, one potato plant to the next. And so Elizabeth has been working uh, with that. Part of the, our project is because seed potato growers particularly that are using AFOIL on a minimally once every seven day application rate during the summertime, we're having a hard time getting good vine kill in a timely manner. And so Elizabeth has taken on this project as an undergraduate because during COVID, we were unable to secure a graduate student. Um, and so it's been very exciting. So that is my team that is with me today. Um, as far as the potatoes, uh, hopefully everybody saw there's a big, huge display on the south wall over here. This is uh, the most advanced russets in our breeding program. Uh, you'll see a lot of numbers. Um, it's on page three, I guess, table one of your handout. You'll see a lot of numbers that you recognize. The majority of those would be farther to the uh, left as I'm facing the table. The eight cultivars that they are being compared against are on the west table. Um, and so there you'll get a good opportunity to see Dakota Russet and Dakota Trailblazer along with other standards like Russet Norcota and, and Russet Burbank. Uh, as far as the numbered lines, there are three different ones that are in the National French Fry Processing Trial at varying stages, and then uh, the ND12, not looking at my numbers, one, uh, 12, 241 YB-2 Russ is in tier three in the National French Fry Processing Trial, and it has been um, looking quite promising. Right next door to that one is an ND12154 AB-2 Russ. It was in the National French Fry Processing Trial back in 2017. I have it in a trial over at Park Rapids, and last week in the big processing dig that we did, it was the highest yielding cultivar out of, or it's not a cultivar yet, but numbered line out of all of the cultivars and numbered lines in that trial and it was already about it was exceeding 550 hundred weight to the acre and all of the french fries were coming out as zeros so um, that line is looking very very promising and it looks quite good over here uh, on the table also uh, the three newest ones over there are nd 273 bc-1 russ and the two nd 14 286 bc's they are dash two Russ and dash seven Russ, and they are surprisingly good in terms of both appearance and yield potential. So, uh, while heat and lack of rain have you know significantly impacted a lot of our production, I know as far as our seed operation, things are small and a little bit delayed. When we uh, dug the samples for later today, those tubers are small. But overall, under irrigation, things are really looking good. And so I feel like we have a good test and a good display. And I look forward to chatting with people if they are interested. I was going to offer a little tour out to the uh, mini pivot, but I think given the rain, I would prefer to stay out of the mud out there. So thank you. If anybody has any questions, hopefully I didn't. Um, Forget, oh, I did forget to say two things. I'm clutching uh, some note cards up here. Um, it, during the course of the year, um, also if you read the handout, you'll see all of the different sorts of projects that we're involved in. Um, but I'd rather focus on the processing russets while we're up here. Um, in May, we had a variety release meeting and Dakota Dawn was named. So very excited about that. It's the first specialty variety coming out of the NDSU breeding program. And sometime, hopefully, in the next few months, I know I keep saying this every year, but 7519-1, which is a beautiful cold chipper, just finished its third year in the 
uh, snack food association trial and so it is looking very promising we have a lot of growers in North Dakota and beyond that are interested in uh, producing this clone and so hopefully we're going to be having a variety release meeting for it and I'll just put out a little um, teaser I'm hoping to somehow be able to honor Bryce Farnsworth that worked with our breeding program for 48 years and a lot of the of our success is because of the work that Bryce had done and so I have a name picked out that incorporates some of his name and so hopefully you'll all hear about that when we get to get get to get together again um, at the Alaris Center for the Research Reporting Conference and the Crops Expo in February. Thank you.